Welcome everyone, here is how you use the Google Pixel 6a. So first of all, we'll be brought to the home screen. If you want to set up screen, watch my setup tutorial in the description. If you slide to the left, you'll be brought to the next page. Slide to the right, you'll be brought to the previous page. If you slide up, you'll be brought to the app drawer. This is where all of your applications are located. Now by default, new applications will be installed to the next page of your home screen. You can see all of the games right here. But for you, you may not use all these apps. You may want to remove applications from the home screen. So in order to do this, long press on the app and then drag it. You see remove, remove uh, means you remove the app from the home screen. Uninstall means you completely uninstall the app. So when I tap on remove here, I have now removed the app from my home, uh, home screen. If I want to completely uninstall an app, I can drag and drop into the uninstall area uh, on the home screen. If the app isn't on the home screen, I can go to the app drawer and do the exact same drag and drop to uninstall. Now I'm just going to add this back to my home screen and you may look at these buttons right here. Power, volume up, volume down. These are very useful, not just for, you know, click it once to lock the pixel, okay, stuff like that, you know, use the volume rockers, no. If you want to take a screenshot on Google Pixel 6a, you need to use the power and volume down buttons. You just click release both buttons, don't hold the buttons, okay, click release and you'll take a screenshot. So let's do this together, three, two, one, click release, boom, screenshot was taken. You will see a preview here. If you slide the preview to the left, it will save to the Photos app. So if I go to Photos, if I just go out of here, by default, you'll be brought to the Photos area right here. To view the screenshot, tap on Library, Screenshots, and you'll see all of the screenshots you have taken. If I take another screenshot, again, Power, Volume Down, click Release. So let's go, three, two, one, take the screenshot. And if I tap on the Edit button, I can edit the screenshot, Crop, text and if i go here pen highlighter eraser you have the option to undo redo save and delete so i'm going to tap on save here and we'll be good to go now if you want to turn off your pixel 6a you may have had some confusion because if you hold down the power button it's going to activate google assistant so how on earth do you turn off your pixel 6a so i bet some of you would have just been holding google assistant power off and you'd be using that to power off your google pixel 6a but there is a way better way so what you can do instead is you click release power and volume up so click release don't hold these two buttons so let's just do a quick re uh, click release three two one click release and for some reason it disappeared there but you can see power off and restart options right here you tap on power off to power off restart will just power off then power back on and emergency will bring you to the emergency area where you can type in 911, 111, 112, any emergency number uh, you have in your country. Now, if you want to do a false restart, so let's say in the future your pixel is frozen, this is very useful to know because you can press and hold power and volume up. So to access the power down menu, we did a click release of power and volume up. But if you don't release the buttons, this will actually do a false restart on your Pixel 6a. So you hold these two buttons down, you do not release until you see the Google logo. And once you see the Google logo, you can release the power and volume up key and you'll be brought back to the home screen. Now here is the deal. Uh, you may notice we have this home bar right here. How do we navigate our Pixel 6a? So of course, if we open up an app, we can just tap on it. But here is the dilemma. How do I, first of all, go home? How do I access the multitasking? How do I go back? Let's cover it all. So first of all, if you want to go home, you see where the bar is right here, this white bar. It will either be at the bottom if you're in portrait mode. If you're in landscape mode, it'll probably be around here, -ish, okay? So just keep that in mind. Uh, you want to slide where the bar is and you just want to do a flick, okay? So let me open up the uh, settings app again. You see where this home bar is? You just do a flick from the bottom and you do a flick, boom, and you should go home. Now, if you want to access multitasking, you're gonna not do a flick, but you're gonna slide up to about 15, 20% of the screen. And then you'll feel a little vibration. And once you feel that vibration, you release your finger and you'll be brought to multitasking. Now, the vibration happens fairly quickly, okay? You don't you know, need to do uh, releasing your finger right when you feel it, okay? So I felt the vibration, I released my finger, boom. And the vibration allows you to access multitasking very quickly. But again, you can wait for two seconds, one, 
to the vibration already happened ages ago release your finger and you'll still be able to access multitasking now when you're in the multitasking view you will see all of the apps you have opened up in the past now you can do a full screenshot of the app and a select to just take a certain part of the uh, uh, the application screenshot of a certain part of the app if you slide from left to right you can see all of the apps okay and you can slide from right to left as well if you slide all the way to the right you can see the clear all option so if you tap on clear all this will remove all applications from multitasking if you want to close out of specific apps from multitasking you can just get your finger here and where the app box is so you can see the app box you just slide up with one finger you do a little flick just like when you go home and that will close out the app right here now something really cool with pixel is you can do multitasking in split screen view so if you want to do split screen multitasking you want to open up the first app and then from here go to the home screen and then open up the second app then you can either go to the home screen or you can stay in the current app you're on but from here you're going to access multitasking again slide up and hold release your finger boom and you see where this little app icon is you tap on it and you tap on split top and then you tap on the second app you want to multitask and just like that we are in the split screen view now let's say you want Google Chrome, for example, to be on the top and messages to be on the bottom. You can just double tap on the white bar, try that again, and you can see it will change the orientation, okay? Google Chrome at the top, messages at the bottom. Now if I slide down from the white bar, you can see I can change the percentage of how much the uh, screen takes up, okay? So 75% messages, 75% Google Chrome, etc. If you slide all the way down, you'll close out of the bottom app. If you slide all the way up, you'll close out of the top app just like that. Now, you're probably going to care about uh, downloading apps, okay? So you download apps from an app called Google Play. Now, when you open up Google Play for the first time, uh, by default, you should be brought to the home screen. And so you have games, apps, movies, and books. If you see a sign in button, you must sign in with your Google account, okay? Now, I'll be honest, if you're watching this video, you probably have already signed in. But let's say you don't have a Google account, there will be an option to create an account. Creating an account is kind of mandatory to using your Google Pixel 6a, so keep that in mind. You have the search bar, we can search up games and apps, and they will all show up right here. You have ads, so these are ads, okay, just keep that in mind. And then you have all these suggested apps as well. If you want to download an app, you tap on it, and there'll be an install button, and you can tap on install. You can also see, if you've installed the app in the past, you have the option to uninstall the app, you have the option to load up the app directly and if in the future there is an update you will also have the option to update the app directly from here as well now if we go to the settings app there's a bunch of cool stuff we can play around with so let's go to network and internet here this is where you have the wi-fi settings the cool settings you can manage your sim cards airplay mode hotspot so if you want a hotspot let's say you want to share your network data saver okay this is for uh, you know using a sim card VPN, do keep in mind that for VPN you do need to download a VPN app from the App Store. Uh, private DNS and adaptive connectivity. So these two stuff you probably don't need to worry about if you don't know what they are. If you do know what they are, then of course you can use them. Now we have connected devices. So this is the Bluetooth settings, okay? So uh, on top of that you can also connect NFC devices here. So you see, pair new device, you tap on this one. And then you put your device in pairing mode that you want to pair with. So let's say you want to connect your headphones here. You'd put your headphones in pairing mode. You tap on it and boom, you'd be paired successfully. You have apps. You can change the app settings here. So if you want to change default apps, so let's say the default browser, you know, Google Chrome, uh, assistant settings, screen time. If you want to see how frequently you are using your apps, okay, you can see that here. Uh, unused apps. So if you don't use an app for an extended period of time, it will show up here. Uh, so you can free up storage. If you want to change individual app settings, you can tap on see all apps. And uh, let's say I never use the Google, I tap on it, and you have the option to disable the app. Uh, and then you just tap on disable, and that will stop the app from working. Also, if an app is glitching, you have the option to force stop. This will just crash the app, so that it will forcefully reload when you next open up the application uh, as well. If you go to notification uh, notifications here, you can see you can change the app settings for each individual apps. But do keep in mind that when it comes to notifications, you can change notifications by just using the volume rockers. So if you click volume down or up, you see this little bell, I can send the clicks in there. 
If you see this uh, bell, if you tap on the bell with the slash, that means mute mode is on. Let me try that again. If you tap on the vibration icon, vibration's on, and all that good stuff. And if you tap on the triple dots, you can also manually change the sound, the vibration options here, all that good stuff as well. Again, you can turn off notifications for individual apps if you don't want to use silent mode. So let's say PUBG is a game. Why do I have notifications for that? I'm going to turn that one off. Uh, all that good stuff from here. You have conversations. So these are people you're talking with. Okay, you can clear the uh, conversations here uh, through the messages app. And then the bubbles as well. So this is just uh, options when it comes to the settings app. Okay, so uh, you see allow apps to show bubbles. Let's say the messages app, right? You just want to have quick access to messages. You can have that on or off. You probably don't want to change this one around. You have all these other options to mess around with here, but the main one is do not disturb. Do not disturb. Essentially, what it allows you to do is block all notifications without turning on silent mode. So even when silent mode is on, you'll see notifications, but they won't like make any sound. Do not disturb. You just won't see any notifications at all, regardless if silent mode is on or off. So you turn this one on, and you can change the settings for do not disturb right here. Then you have some other options here: allow notifications, move uh, snoozing, enhance notifications. So if you're wondering what this is, this allows you to. I'll allow Google to give you suggested notifications, uh, actions. So let's say someone messages you saying hi. Google would suggest you to say hey back, okay? You can turn that one on or off. And you can also hide some notifications in the status bar uh, if you would like to as well. And they have the battery. So this will show you the battery percentage, all that good stuff. Uh, if we go to usage, it will show the usage of your battery. You have the battery saver. This will essentially just slow the processor so you get more battery life overall. I don't recommend you turn that one on, honestly. Just keep it off. Adaptive preferences. So adaptive battery will extend the life of your battery. So over time, the battery will degrade. Having this one on will help prevent that. And then you also have the battery percentage. So if you want to have that on as well, you can have that one on. This is where you view all the stuff in your storage, okay? So you tap on the games, it'll show all the games using up the most storage. You can clear the storage here. Uh, so let's say the app is using a lot of data, you can clear that out. All that good stuff, okay? If you want to uninstall an app, again, I did show that off earlier off in the video. Now if I go to sound the vibration, you can change all the sounds. But again, you can do that through this triple dots here, which I did show off earlier. You have the display settings. So it's gonna show the brightness level here, okay? We like to change the brightness. We have adaptive brightness, lock screen, uh, screen timeout, all this stuff you can just play around with right here. All this stuff really here is self-explanatory other than the lock screen. Because if I tap into lock screen and I go all the way to the bottom, you see this always show time and info. And I turn this one on. This will give me always on display in my Pixel 6a. Of course, yours as well. So you may not be able to see this, but always on display is on. So when I lock the pixel, it still shows the time 24 seven. If I double tap or click the lock button, I am brought back to a regular lock screen. You can also add text to lock screen, 60 here. I added saw in the verse. When I go to lock screen, uh, the regular lock screen that is, you can see my name right here. You also have the privacy options. So if you want, let's say in a lock screen, for no notification to show off at all, you can tap on here, don't show notifications. So that will prevent someone who gets access to your phone to see what the content of your notifications are. You have the option to change the dark theme, font size, display size, all that good stuff, and screensaver as well. You can change this as well. You can see here, screensaver, if you want that on, off, boom. Now from here, you have the wallpaper and stuff. So this is where you change the wallpaper. Also gives you the option for dark theme twice for some reason. Uh, you also have the option to change the clock color and the system colors. So you can see, if I change it to beige, you can see some of the OS changes to beige as well. And if I go all the way down here, accessibility, these are accessibility settings that you probably will not mess around with. If you know what you're looking at here, then you're gonna be able to change them. If you don't know, there is no point playing around. Now you have the security. So this is where you can uh, add um, you know, screen lock, uh, fingerprint lock, all that good stuff. I do have tutorials on how to set up fingerprint in the description if you need to. You then have the privacy settings here. So you can allow camera access, microphone access. If you turn this off, no app will be able to allow the camera. 
same with no app will be allowed to uh, allow access to that microphone so just keep this stuff in mind when you're looking at this stuff you'll probably never go here i use an android daily i have never went in that set area before you have the location so we turn this one on this will not mean that all apps will be able to allow access to your location what it does mean though is applications can request for your location so keep that in mind you have the safety and emergency here so you can change all these options like adding medical information, emergency contacts, emergency SOS, all that good stuff if you would like to. You can now manage your Google account here. So if you want to manage your account, you test tap on the Google. You have the system, so you can change the gestures. So remember earlier with the system navigation here, if you want to use buttons, you can tap into here for the free button layout, okay? Uh, you have all these other stuff like one-handed mode, which will just shrink the screen so you can easily access with one hand tap to check phone as well so if you just tap once you can see it will show notifications time all that good stuff and you have stuff like backup changing the date and time changing the keyboard and languages uh, if you want a factory reset you just go here to factory reset and about phone this gives you all of your about information so your phone number google account don't worry if you see my phone number by the way this is a burner sim card so it's not a concern. I don't think the SIM card actually works. And then tips and support. So uh, some Google help, stuff like that right here. But this video does a better job than Google does. All right, let's say you want to use the camera. So it's going to ask the location. I'm going to turn off the location. So here is the deal, okay? If we tap on the arrow from here, you'll have all these options. So night sight. So by default, night sight is set to auto. So if you want low brightness, uh, it will use AI to just you know help make the image look you know brighter than it really is. You can set this to flash. So flash just uses a flash. Okay. So if I just take a picture, you can see yeah flash right. Uh, that will take a picture with the flash. If you don't want night sight or flash to be on, you can disable that. Top shot is like live photos on the iPhone, if you know what that is. So we'll take a photo and then after a couple of seconds, it'll also be recording a video and you can switch between the two. I personally think it's not what you want to use, so I'll turn it off. Timer, so if you select this, it'll give a countdown before the picture is taken. Then you have the ratio. So this is the ratio, okay, four by three and 16 by nine, you can see it's wider. Now if I go back, you have the ultra wide camera and the regular camera. Now there is no telephoto, so if you tap on two here, it is just doing a digital zoom in. Okay, so just keep this stuff in mind. If you long press, you can also use a manual slider to just switch across, okay? Just like that, if you would like to. If you tap on the screen as well, you can change stuff like the brightness, the exposure, color temperature, and when you tap on the arrow of the screen, it will lock on to focus, okay? So you can see it's locked onto this remote control, always stay on there as well if you want to switch modes you just tap on the mode boom 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 okay if you want to switch between like let's say camera to night so you can always tap on the option directly uh, as well now you also have advanced settings so if i go to more settings you have all these options to mess around with uh, really the main stuff is just make sure google lens suggestions is turned on and when you go to advanced here uh, if you want even higher quality photos, you turn off RAW plus JPEG as well. And if you have a Windows computer, you turn off still videos officially. If you're like transferring the photos and videos all the time, you turn that uh, off right here. And all this other stuff, you would just leave on. Uh, now, if we go to video, the settings as well are slightly dif uh, different. So you can see resolution and frame rate. So resolution is how many like pixels is like being recorded at once okay so essentially the more pixels the higher the quality of the image so if you want the highest quality you set it to 4k now frames a second is how smooth the video is okay because there could be a really high quality video but it could be a choppy high quality video okay if that makes any sense so the higher the frame rate the better i personally recommend you set this to 60 for more smooth feel but you can set this to 30 it'll be a bit laggier uh just keep that in mind you can also have the flash on or off while recording and the more settings will bring you to the same you know, more settings options. You can also tap on slow motion and time lapse to use slow motion and time lapse as well. So I've gone deep into the Google Pixel 6a. I've covered literally, well not literally everything, but mostly everything. This should get you 
good to go, ready to use your Google Pixel 6a. I do make a ton of tutorials as well, so I'll have a playlist how to use the Pixel 6a. If you're having any issues, you want to learn something new, uh, that video, uh, or that playlist even, will give you all the stuff you need to know. So with that being said, thanks for watching. See you guys later. Bye-bye.